Hey guys, and warm welcome back to the channel. My name is Grace, if you're new here, and this is the Rusty Thicket. Today I wanted to share with you guys how I use my Cricut machine to make the paper pieces that I'm going to be putting together as watercolor designs for some jewelry that I really want to make. Um, if you've been following the channel, you know I make magnets, keychains, uh, bookmarks, and other things that use cabochon um, glass like bubbles. I don't know what else you call them, the little half domes of glass, um, like these. But anyway, so I use those on a lot of my artwork. It's a protector and then it just, it makes it look just whimsical and magical in my opinion. And I wanted to apply that same thing to jewelry, but I was having a hard time finding jewelry that wasn't just like cheap mixed metal. And I finally came across some stainless steel that won't turn your um, skin colors and things like that. I just want them to be, I just want them to be nice, you know, and I want things to be of quality from my shop. So uh, you can get these in all kinds of sizes and designs. I went with some really simple basic stuff that I thought would be, you know, cute and dainty, something that you might actually want to gift also, maybe not knowing that person's jewelry personality super well, but having something just really basic and simple. Um, so I chose these for the bracelets. So this is where the art will go. And then it's a little cuff. It's super cute and dainty, really lightweight. And even with the glass bubble on it, it's going to be um, just really nice. And then though those actually came with a set so it's the necklace pendant which i have the chain in my box over here and then these itty bitty little earrings so they're pretty tiny which i like because you know i don't like anything really heavy on my earlobes anyway so i wanted something that i would potentially wear too that's another reason i went with stainless steel because i know that it's the better option when it comes to just lasting stuff and they don't have anything like this that I've seen at least in any kind of sterling silver or anything like that. And then I was at the Daiso the other day and I have been noticing that barrettes are really coming back into popularity. I've seen them all over the base here and actually yesterday um, I was in the commissary and I noticed like I think it was a family of three or four girls, all different age groups, wearing barrettes in their hair again. And I love that. I think that's very whimsical and cute. And of course, you know, it's a personality thing. You can have whatever you want. So I found these. My chair is really squeaky. I'm sorry. I found these at the Daiso. They're pretty much the same thing, except I won't have glass domes for them. Um, they're already kind of on the heavy side, but they're a nice sturdy metal. They're not cheap feeling. Um, so I will fill these with resin after I do the artwork on them. But in order to get paper to go inside of this to where I know what size it needs to be to um, make the right cut, I don't like to have to guess and trim things down, trim things down, and then the next thing you know it doesn't fit because it's too small and taking some kind of measurement on this outside of the barrette and same with like the bracelet and all of that if you're taking the outside measurement it's too big for the inside because there's a lip here that you want to stay within otherwise the resin goes over the top of that so what i thought would be the handiest thing would be to buy a micrometer <coughs> Okay, sorry about that, my neighbor came to the door. Anyway, so what I was saying was, it's really hard to judge the area in here that you want to cut so that it doesn't, so that it fits perfectly and it doesn't um, either come over this edge where your resin needs to sit or it's too small and just doesn't look good. Um, and same with this one, like it would be a lot easier because you could probably just take a ruler to that, but, and I mean, ultimately you could take a ruler to this too. But I thought having a micrometer would be a lot easier because not only do you need the decimal readout for the Cricut anyway when you're putting in your shape sizes, but this one has an inside reader. So 
instead of taking this one, which you would want to use on the outside, I don't know if you're able to see that really well, but like this one goes on the outside and then this one, this side, reads on the inside measurement. So like with this oval where it would be really hard to take a ruler and make sure you're getting exactly the inside, you just get the digital read out and make sure it's on the right thing. Okay, and then that way you can just do the digital readout of the inside of this oval and in both directions. And then that way you put it in on the Cricut machine and it's simple. Like you don't have to remember the measurement on the ruler. You don't have to, you know, move it around a bunch. You basically just line it up exactly where you think the halfway point in between the edges are and extend it the entire way. And that's what the measurement is. So I definitely recommend if you work with the Cricut a lot and you're doing precise measurements for very certain things, a micrometer is absolutely the way to go. I will link this one in my description box below. It was $8 off of Amazon. And I would typically say, just go ahead and get that one. But if you're in the States and you have Lowe's and Home Depot and even Walmart available to you, I'm sure you could find one for the exact same price, if not cheaper. Um, there are very expensive ones to get to, but I need one in um, inches and that's, you know, not a thing here in Japan. So I didn't want to have to also do conversions for that, which is why I just ordered one online. Um, so I will show you next how to put that in on the Cricut's, uh, Cricut Maker site and then we will have it print out on some, or cut out on some watercolor paper. And then on Thursday, so the next video after this, I will show you some of those designs and how I finish that product. So stay tuned. Okay, just to give a slightly better, closer up video of this. So this is the micrometer. It's got inches and millimeters, and then you can zero it out also, which we'll want to do um, at some point probably, but not for this one. So zero it out when it is closed and then make sure it's on either inches or millimeters, whichever one you want. And then because we're doing the inside measurement, like I said, we want to use the one where the um, little grippy guys go past each other first and not this one where they start out next together and move apart. So to do this this way, Maybe this is a good view, I guess. So you're gonna pull them apart and you want just inside of that lip there. And I'm gonna line it up kind of with some lines that are in the barrette anyway. So we're looking at 1.05 inches. And then this way, do the exact same thing. And we're looking at 2.53. And this is probably going to be way more accurate than anything I would do with a ruler just because it's already decimal and I don't have to, you know, break a ruler measurement down into decimals, but also because um, it's going to sit right inside of that lip perfectly where the ruler may not. Okay, and then you're going to go to your Cricut Design Space. And as you can see here, I've already got them planned out, but I do just want to show you in a new project how I do this exactly. So like, see how this here says 1.05 and 2.53, just like we had said a minute ago. Um, and you're going to want to enter those into this up here and make sure that you hit the unlock proportions button. Um, but I'll show you here really, really quick. So you're gonna to go to your shapes tool over here and you're gonna pick something that is similar to it already, like here's an oval. And when you get this oval, you know, you can make it any size you want this way, but it's just easier since these are already in decimal form to go up to that size description area. And we want, we want the oval to be 1.5 this way. So that's this number here, it's gonna be the height. And it's gonna be one point, oops. 1.05 actually, and then hit the unlock button. 
and then go over to your other one, and I believe it was 2.56, something like that. Yep, okay, and then we can see how that looks a lot more like that barrette already. All right, and so it was 2.53, but anyway, you understand what I mean. And then I did the same thing for all the little circles, and then I duplicated that as many times as I thought maybe I would, you know, because I have more necklaces and things than I do the barrettes, obviously. Um, but we're going to have it do multiples. And then you're going to hit make it and select on the mat, confirm. And then because my page is going to be 12 by nine, that's what size my watercolor paper is. You just wanna make sure that you get enough in here to fill that up nicely. I could probably add a couple of more barrettes, but I actually want a little leftover paper just in case, um, because sometimes this gets moved down a smidge when it goes to cut. So then I've got to take my laptop into that room and connect it so that it will talk to it because I don't have my Bluetooth set up. So we'll do that next. Okay, and we're gonna make sure that we do one above cardstock because this is pretty thick watercolor paper. Okay, so there we have all of the pieces cut. And this never cuts perfectly, even though I put it on like the hardest setting. So we'll have to go through and cut them out individually, some of them. Or well, you know, it's just like stuck on the corner. Uh, but I do want to show really quick how this works when you add them to their pieces. So hopefully I measured well and see how that just slides absolutely perfectly in there. Perfect. And I didn't have to work any harder than taking the micrometer and plugging in the numbers to the computer and now they are the perfect size and I can make a hundred of them if I want to and you know I didn't like it's it literally fits in there perfect all right and same with the oval we'll see if we got that one right too oh the paper is a little bowed here at the end but yes it fits perfectly inside of this oval same with the earrings fits right in there and then all of the circle sizes that are different, I didn't have to do anything more than measuring them. They fit perfectly in the bracelet and perfectly in the necklace holder. And this just goes to show you how if you work smarter and not harder, um, you know, and use what you have because I just had a Cricut, thankfully, I know not everybody has a Cricut, but I just had one and was trying to find ways to incorporate it into my business where it made sense to keep it because otherwise it was just, you know, a label maker basically. And I love that about the Cricut, but it didn't serve any other purpose for me really. And I like things to be extremely purposeful. And even if it is fun, I still want that item to also have a purpose. And this is this has saved me so much time and effort and wrist power. Do you know what cutting circles is like? You don't wanna do that, especially not when you're trying to make 40 of something or more. And I'm getting to where I'm having volumes like that now. So uh, this is just perfect. I just wanted to share with everybody how great it works if you are looking for very specific sized things. Um, now, obviously you can do this with whatever you want. I don't know practically what other material I would ever use, but since I'm a watercolor artist and it will cut watercolor paper, this is just, it makes so much sense. Um, I would love to find other ways. So if you guys run your own business or have your own craft that you have found really useful things for the Cricut, just let me know because 
I'm all about making my jobs easy and fast and enjoyable. So I would love to know. But next uh, video on Thursday, I will have some designs kind of drawn out and we'll do a few of those and finish them off with either the glass cabochons or the resin, whichever I decide to get into and maybe all of them just so that you can see a set of finished pieces so you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was more of a tutorial than anything, but I have been excited to do this particular project and I wanted to share it. So I hope you like it. Uh, please make sure you like the video and subscribe. And I would love to have some more comments below. So if you don't mind to shoot me a little comment, that would be great. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. Thank <laughs> you.